In this video we're going to look at gaining intravenous access in a patient. We'll be looking at the equipment that we need to carry out that procedure and we'll go on then to insert a cannula into a vein in a patient's hand. It's important that we gain consent from our patients and that they fully understand the procedure that we're about to do and also give them the right to refuse as it can be uncomfortable. We wouldn't routinely gain intravenous access However, there are times when we can predict that the patient's condition will worsen and we need to gain access before that does happen. Intravenous cannulas can be used for administering drugs and fluids to patients. In front of me here, we have a range of equipment, starting with the tourniquet, and we use this to pop around a patient's arm, tight enough to restrict the blood flow back from the arm, but not tight enough to stop blood flow into the arm. In this way, we'll get the veins to engorge and make access much easier. These are disposable, single use only, and they can be quite uncomfortable because they're made of sticky rubber. We need to create a sterile field. So inside our cannula pack, we have a number of dressings that we can use to create that sterile field. and some devices for securing the cannula in place and for identifying where and when and who placed the cannula. Our cannulas come in a range of different sizes starting at 24, 22, 20, 18, 16 and 14 gauge. Essentially, the smaller the number, the bigger the cannula. So for fluids, or when we need to give fluids in a rush into a big vein, we would use a 16 or a 14 gauge cannula. Generally for drug administration, we would use an 18 or a 20 gauge cannula. For smaller patients, for elderly people with fragile veins, we would opt to use a 22. And for children, perhaps a 24 gauge would be appropriate. However, the flow rate for these is very slow. Before we insert the cannula, we need to prepare the area and there are a number of various products available. This one is chlorexidine and it's in a glass vial, which we open, break the glass, and that allows the fluid to be soaked up into the gauze. And we use this to prepare the patient's skin. It's important that when we've applied this to the patient that we do allow it to dry. But in any case, we need to make sure that the cannula is patent. So we would draw up some normal saline into a syringe so that we could clean out the cannula and test that it is patent as a patient would often feel the cool fluid flowing up the inside of their arm. This confirms that it's in place. As with all consumables, they do come with a use-by date and it's important that we don't use the product beyond that date as the sterility can be no longer guaranteed. They are irradiated when they're manufactured but that irradiation wears off after a while and the manufacturer can no longer guarantee the product. We should make sure that the packaging is not damaged and that there's no ingress of dirt and therefore potential bacteria into the packaging. Because when we carry out this procedure, a sharp will be exposed, it's important to make sure that we always have a sharps container close. And it is the responsibility of the person exposing the sharp to dispose of that sharp appropriately. In this case, we'll be using a yellow sharps container, which is sealable and should be sent off for incineration when it's full to the line. Hi, Duncan. My name's Tony, I'm a paramedic and we've agreed that we need to get some intravenous access so that we can give you some pain relief medicine. Do you understand that? I do, yeah. Yeah, okay. The procedure will be, I will put a tourniquet around your arm and help, that'll help me to see a vein on the back of your hand and I'll insert a needle in there and then just push a little bit of clear fluid through it now to make sure that it's in place correctly. 
it will be a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay. The risks of this are quite small, but the risk of infection is, of course, present. And the risk of damaging some underlying tissues, like I say, that risk is very small. Okay. Yeah, no problem. If you've got to do it, you've got to do it. Okay. The benefits to you will be that we'll be able to give you some strong painkillers and you, you will get, you'll be more relaxed and comfortable. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay.